What up, YouTube? Flash Peace back for another video. Uh, Darius Slade, the all-pro uh, at it before uh, cornerback of the Philadelphia Eagles, has this weekly podcast um, that he holds here. I guess uh, he'll be doing this after his career. Maybe he wants to get into podcasting. I, I don't know, whatever the case may be. I, I don't really care. I watch it sometimes. Sometimes I don't. Um, I, I did catch it this morning because – this is a particular week where I was looking for an explanation as to why this defense has been so porous and maybe some hopes that he could share some insight into as to why I should expect or why fans should expect him to be better. Um, I'm going to start where he started, uh, really at the 12-minute mark where he began to talk about uh, this 49er game um, or start to give the reasons why the defense has been horrible. Prior to this, he was giving all this freaking praise, fucking praise to the San Francisco 49ers uh, for how great they are. At a certain point, he actually called them the best team in the league. Um, that is not what I want to hear from a Philadelphia Eagles player. Um, but what I will say is, um, oh, yeah, another thing that annoyed me, if you look in the comments, it's just a bunch of praise from San Francisco 49er fans, right? The, the same piece of crap, you know, fan base, who after we beat them in the championship game, all they did was have excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. All they did was talk about how Philadelphia fans are, and ain't this, ain't that. Even their radio stations were talking uh, crazy. And what is what is annoying me is the Philadelphia, uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles side, in particular, the players are not reciprocating the same energy that the 49ers fan bases are giving to us. The Philadelphia Eagles are just like, I don't know, acting and playing this uh, big uh, high road uh, thing where, you know, not going to say anything disrespectful about anybody. We're going to just, you know, say all the right things and handle it, handle it on the field. Now, the problem is when you don't handle it on the field, um, you end up just looking like clowns. And that's what you look like right now. Like all throughout the internet, you're being clowned, being told um, that you're frauds. Uh, you got people just podcasting, talking about you. You got people talking about your quarterback, saying he's a damn running back who can't throw the ball. You got all of this going on. And you want to sit here, I guess, make your money, act like you don't really care, and it's just the game is no big deal. This, this nigga Slay actually had the nerve to say they just saw it as another game and that the media was hyping it up. When this is a lie, unless you're just so delusional and um, you just have no idea what's going on, that San Francisco 49ers players were dressed in black. They were dressed in black, and that meant something. They meant they came to put someone in a casket. This was the mentality of the 49ers, okay? This guy want to sit up here with this stupid-ass smile, right? But anyway, man, we're going to let him talk, and, and I'm going to respond, man, because he needs to understand how we feel about this. Go ahead, Slay. Hey, we love you, man. Hey, you almost almost had a dirty play. You 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 about pushed my boy Hurts out of bounds. It was almost a late hit, but you didn't, though. We respect that, though, because you're, you're a dog now. Don't do my dog like that, because I seen the pressure. You almost thought, I thought you were finna get the flag, but you cleaned it up. You did good, though. So let's get on to our defensive side of the ball. You know, and I'm, I'm, you know I'm gonna keep it real. I'm one of the guys that could be always be honest on here. I'm going to be the guy. We did not play near as good. We haven't been playing near as good all year as we need to be with all this talent on us. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no shit, Sherlock. Feel. So we do got to play better on the defensive side so we can help the offense out. We should not be giving up 41 points to a team. That's tough to do. It's hard to win in the league if you're giving up 41 points. So on the defensive side, we got to be better all across the board. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Or I know people be like, oh, y'all one of the top five run defenses, uh, but y'all like 25th and pass, 28th and pass, whatever we are. But y'all not understanding the game right now. You know what I'm saying? Our D-line is great at what they do, right? But teams know we got a great D-line. So teams don't really want to run the ball because it's a waste of play. So guys really be throwing the ball 50 times, 40 times. 30 times like you know how hard it is to guard a guy 30 to 40 times in the game running routes not knowing what he's doing um all kind of stuff so wow 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 
Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Darius Slay. We don't know the game. I, I'm going to just throw that out here. I, 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 don't, I don't really care about that. This man just said that we have a great defensive line. So because we have a great defensive line, teams are throwing the ball and don't want to run the ball. So they're throwing it 40, 50 times. And it's difficult to guard these guys because they're throwing the ball so much. Well, let's use, let's go with that logic. Perhaps because you have a bad secondary, because you're consistently giving up 400 yards, that's why they're passing the ball, right? It, it works both ways. It isn't just a one-sided thing. I don't know what type of logic you're working with, right? But... If you're bad against the pass, that's why they're passing it. Like, it is possible to be good against the pass and good against the run. Like, you do realize that, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be one or the other. You can be good at both or you could be bad at both. And then most of the teams you faced, they don't run the ball anyway. Buffalo Bills aren't passing because they're looking at, uh, well, you have a great defensive line. No, they're passing because that's what Buffalo Bills do. Right? They're noted for that. They don't pass the ball. And Josh Allen actually got a lot of yards running. He was running all through you. The Kansas City Chiefs ran the ball 19 times with Pacheco. All right? And they got a few other pass, uh, a few other runs with the other guys. Now, they pass more than that, primarily because that's Patrick Mahomes. So that's more like uh, just the personnel. Those teams, those particular teams you face, they pass the ball. And Pacheco actually was very effective running the ball in the beginning of the game. So I don't know like what what we're talking about here, right? The defensive line. I don't know why you're looking for some sort of like mercy. You're not going to get that here. I don't care if they pass the ball a hundred times. I expect you to be effective because also, right? The more they pass, the more opportunity you have to get sacks. The more opportunity you have to get turnovers. Jump a route, intercept the ball. I guarantee you they'll stop passing as much. We don't want to hear that, bud. We don't want to hear that, bro. We don't well, of course we, our passing yard is going to be up there because the fact that we start to run so good, guys don't have no choice but to throw the ball consistently. I'm just saying we just played a game against the Buffalo Bills. He threw the ball 51 times. We just played dumb. I think. All right. They're passing the ball 51 times because it's working, you idiot. Like, bro, I don't, I don't want to disrespect you, man. You feel off your ego. But, but, like, they're passing the ball because the passing game is working. That's why. So you have to stop it. See, now I don't, I'm not sure if this is going to stop. Like, because this is his mentality, and he's supposedly the best cornerback. So if the other cornerbacks have this same mentality. I don't know if this is going to improve. And this is very disheartening to hear. Because he believes you just can't stop a receiver. Like the receiver, ain't, he could run, he could go out there and go out for 41 passes. But you're more tired than he is. Like, for example, like the Philadelphia Eagles, we don't like when Jalen Hurts passes 40 times, 50 times. Why? Because then the offense becomes one-dimensional and more predictable and easier for the defense to stop. But this guy's trying to tell me that the defense is going to be, the offense is harder to stop because they're passing more than they're running. Oh, man. Brock threw it for probably about 35 times. He was 19 for like 35 or something. I'm talking about, that's almost 100 reps right there running. We even put in the ones that they scramble on. You know what I'm saying? The ones they run around and just get rushing yards. You know what I'm saying? So, it be a lot going on out there, man, as a defense. So we do got to play better, definitely, in the secondary. We got to make plays. Second but you're looking for sympathy. Oh, boy. There is included with linebackers and sometimes some D linemen because our D linemen drop backs and be hook and curl players and all that kind of stuff. So we all, it's a package deal. We all got to be better in the past game. Okay, so what you want to do is, yeah, don't just blame us in the secondary, you know, for being able to stop passes. You know, I need you to blame, you know, Hassan Reddick too because he drops back sometimes and Nola Smith because he drops back sometimes. And uh, I need you to blame the linebackers too because they drop back sometimes. Well, guess what, bro? You're the one getting paid the big money to stick the best receiver on the other on the other side of the field. 
James Bradbury was brought in here because he was a Pro Bowl level linebacker, uh, uh, cornerback for the New York Giants. Kevin Byer was brought here because he was an All Pro safety. Okay, most of the blame is going to go to you. That's where. That's just the way that's going to work. All right, we're not going to sit. I'm not about to sit up here and blame Hassan Ruddick, you know, for what's happening in the passing game because he drops back sometimes. Because if the pass was going and they win their one on ones and we win our one on ones, you know. Play dead. So it's, it's a complimentary game, man. So if the cover's good, we get cover sacks. If the rush good, and, you know, sometimes we might have a bad snap of coverage, and they get a stack. So it always it mirrors together. So we got to. Everybody know that. They ain't, they, ain't, they ain't nothing deep. Cover better so that way we can get more cover sacks. I don't remember the last time we got a cover sack because quarterbacks are able to get rid of the ball within less than two seconds with you guys. You know you're some of the worst at that. Right? Key teams go to a quick game. You've been getting beat with a quick game week after week. So how about you have some confidence, play up in somebody's chest, and believe in your athleticism that you could stay with somebody. I watched you going up against Brandon Ayuk, and you're off Brandon Ayuk. Right? That second and 15 in that on that third drive of the 49ers is when you had them on the ropes. I saw you off of Ayuk. Ayuk was able to get a 12-yard gain on, on that play. And from there, everything went downhill because that whole drive, you're playing off of the receiver. I don't understand why they're paying you all this money to play zone and to play off or even if it's man, but you're off the receiver. You're not in position to make a play. All right. And um, I don't know, man. I grew up, I'm sorry, I grew up watching Eric Allen. I grew up watching Troy Vincent, Bobby Taylor. I grew up watching uh, Asante Samuel, who actually would play off, but he knew what the hell he was doing. All right. You and Bradbury don't know what the hell y'all doing, man. Or something, right? Work together, continue to keep working together, as we all know. And we do have to tackle better. But tackling them guys right there are very, very elite guys. They one of the best yak teams in the league. Might be number one. So you want sympathy for not being able to cover first. Now you want sympathy for not being able to tackle. Whew. Bro, you lucky I'm not the owner, bro. If I was the owner... You get some type of uh, message to come to my office. We need to talk personally. Because th this mentality right here is very deeply concerning. No, try to tackle Debo, man. He's a six-foot guy, maybe 5'11", 5'10", about 220, huge legs. You know what I'm saying? He's a hard guy to bring down. Now, y'all see what Kittle do. He still form guys repeatedly. And McCathurin got one of the best balance in the league. He bounced off tackles like it ain't no other. Like he's in the jump house. Like he just boom, 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 bouncing everywhere. And he got great balance, man. He, he's one of the best backs in the league, if not the best back in the league. And it's they just, they're just a tough team to bring down. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Bruh. Bruh. Bruh, 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 bruh. Um, I don't know about y'all. I, I, this is the last year I need to see this guy. I'm dead serious. Like... I'm a big mentality dude. This this dude sounds like a bitch. I'm sorry, but he does. Right? I don't care. You get paid to do that. Do your job. Nobody out there just trying to miss the tackle. People are trying to tackle him, but them guys are good at breaking tackles. So I say for the whole game. But you say he's just not good enough. Okay. Game plan on the defense side is no MEs. That's called miss, miss assignments, basically mental errors, all that kind of stuff. No MEs. Better tackling, communication because of the motion right now in that game. And just execute our playbook, man, and make plays. We did not make enough plays on defense to win that game. And fans. Yeah, yeah. You think? You think? Wow. Oh, you got something to say to fans? I, I got to hear this. I've been seeing all across the internet, man, my young boy, Jalen Carter, man. Everybody's saying, oh, Jalen Carter crying, da-da-da-da. He's a very, very passionate man. I'm talking about very passionate. He loved this game. He plays this game at a high, high level, man. The Eagles fans don't have a problem with Jalen Carter doing that. That's probably 49er fans and, and, and Dallas Cowboy trolls and others like that. We don't have a problem with Jalen Carter crying. I'd rather he cry than do what you're doing. You sitting there talking about, man, Debo, he's just, he's just too big, man. McCaffrey, just too big. Look at his legs. You know. Bro, I don't give a damn about that, man. You need to go low if that's the case, right? I think you know that, though. Oh, I understand him, man. He, he's been a winner all through his career, man. He got two national championships at Georgia. So 
Like, he's just like winning, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, he felt this game. He knew he wanted to win this game because he heard about the rivalry. So he a part of this rivalry. I wouldn't consider it a rivalry, but he knew this was a big game that he wanted to win. We all did. And he, you know, it just took a toll on him, man, because he's like, hey, I want to win, man. He wanted to beat this team. So, uh, hey, y'all got to get off my boy, man, because I've been seeing it. Most of y'all, it's other fans, but Eagles fans understand what's going on, man, because they passionate as well. So I'm sure they was not too mad about him doing that. So they probably loved him even more for, you know, shedding some tears, but... Okay, so who do you talk... Who do you, oh, so you, you, you right now, you're addressing other fans, and you think they're going to care. Fans are going to laugh at him, right, if they're not Eagles fans. So I, I, this dude's all over the place, bro. I, I don't know what's going on. I thought he was talking to Eagles fans. I assumed he was. Like, what the hell you got to explain what the hell's going on to the 49er fans? What are you, trying to go to the 49ers next year? Uh, fans, that's not an Eagles fan... Chill out, man. My man passionate, man. Calm it down, please, and thank you. But hey, any news flash, if they're not Eagles fans, they're not going to chill out. They're not going to calm down. Man. Positive to this game, I must say to us, y'all, that I think we were five, five to six plays from being that game being closer than what it was. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, we had a couple of bus coverages. They made big plays on. Uh, well, well, what does it matter? Make the fucking play. What does it matter? We had a third down at they party. We could have made a third and long at the goal line. It was like third and five or six or so like that. You know, we could have, we had a penalty. They, so they made them sort of like a third and two. So it was, it was a lot of stuff that we could have had better, man. We heard ourselves out there, uh, my honest opinion, even though they was the better team because they executed. They still was the better team because they executed at a high level. I just think. I still was the better team. I could have done this and that, and that, and all right, and when you whipped their ass, they said y'all wasn't nothing. But this is what you're going to do. Why? I don't know. For some reason, you think you're getting points, right? Like being the big man, being the, being the uh, you know, taking the high road, I, I never seen that get you a championship. I need you to be a dog. That's what I need, okay? Now, if you're going to take the high road but somehow be a beast on the field, I can accept it. But it seems like your mentality showed itself on uh, last Sunday, right? Playing off, all of that kind of stuff. You talking like a person that plays off. You talk like a guy that's afraid to put some hands on somebody. And that's very disturbing. If we executed our game plan at the right level, had eyes, been disciplined, the game could have outplayed, could have played differently. You know what I'm saying? But no excuses at all. They whooped our ass in the day. They out executed us, so they deserved to win. And, uh, you know, shout out to the San Fran, man. You know, hopefully, you know, we see y'all again soon, whenever it be. Because uh, I plan on trying to make it to. Yeah, yeah, shout out to them. Yeah. Uh-huh. Another Super Bowl. That's my goal. I want to win. But we go one game at a time. One game at a time. So I'm not looking too far ahead. But I am looking to see them guys soon in the NFC if they there. Let's talk about my game. I All right, man. That's, I don't even care about this game. Um, I actually heard enough of that right there. I'm deeply disturbed by this. Um, he, he makes it sound like, the, hey, man, hey, y'all got to understand. You know, Debo's just too big and McCaffrey's just too big. And, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, you sound like you don't think you can beat them. You know, um, and if that's the case, man, we, we're in deep trouble. We're in deep trouble, man. Um, dude, you better show me something different on Saturday, on, 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 on this Sunday. Because I, I got, I got, I'm looking at you in a totally different light, you know, because now you got my attention. I'm going to be watching these every week now. Man, I'm out, man. Peace.